I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. I have as my guest today, Kyle Bladen. And uh, Kyle, I'm so, so happy to have you here and sharing an interesting story. So we'll uh, get right into it. And I guess I to ask you where you were born and were you born in the church and all? Yes, definitely born into the church. Were you? Yeah. Where was that at? Well, I was born in Seattle, but we moved oh. here really when I was only about four. Oh. So Utah's pretty much Been your born home. and raised. You went to school yeah. here and everything, huh? Yes. Oh, okay. Yep. Grew up in Murray. So you're born in the church. Are your mm -hmm. parents active? And... Yes. Both still very active. Oh, are they? Oh, yeah. are they still? Yeah. They're uh, divorced, but they're both Murray. remarried and active in okay. their second marriages. Okay. How about uh, siblings? Do you have some brothers and sisters? Yes. I have uh, two older brothers, a little brother, and then an older sister and a younger sister. Oh, wow. So. Good family there, huh? Big family. Yeah. And so during your growing up years, I guess primary and church and stuff, just was yeah. part of your life? I know the songs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you learned all the songs, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, did you, I guess, went at 12? I mean, you were baptized at 8, I assume. Yes, and baptized then, at 8. Yeah. And the Aaronic Priesthood at 12? Yep. And, yeah. Yep. I think... I think that's pretty close to as far as I got, as far as advancing in the really? priesthood and all of that. Oh, were you I can't remember if I got further than that. Were the older siblings, were they, did they go further? Or yes, what both my brothers went on missions and served oh, missions. Oh, did they? And my older sister is semi-active, oh. and my younger sister is uh, not active. Not active. What caused you to, to not participate? Was, was the family not participating then, mom and dad? Um, no, that's a good question. Um, I'd, it seemed just, when you're a kid, you don't really, you know, you kind of have a rebellious <laughs> nature. Well, yeah. And so going to church wasn't very fun. It was pretty, pretty boring. <laughs> Well, I'm thinking of, of me at 14. I mean, that's when you would have become a teacher. You didn't ever become a teacher. You no, my parents divorced when I was oh. 12 or 13. So that was And so I kind of it. used that as my opportunity to bail out of attending <laughs> church and stay home and play video games. <laughs> oh, interesting. Did you ever become active after that? I mean, did you take seminary or? I did. I took seminary um, in junior high. Yeah. And... Um, attended church just kind of Getting when I was yeah. being less rebellious or <laughs> just different phases we go through, I yeah. guess. I Did you ever question that the church was the only true church? Did you have like <clears throat> consider a testimony? Uh, I did have a testimony. I mean, <clears throat> there's a lot of, I don't remember the first time that I bore my testimony, yeah. but it was definitely pretty young. I mean, I, I, I don't know if it's like this for everybody, but I've naturally felt pressured, especially when no one's up there and it's like, who's going to go bear their testimony? <laughs> and your parents probably would encourage you through the week or maybe even the morning of. To, yeah. Are you going to bear your testimony today? Yeah, yeah I did it a couple of times did for you? sure. But yeah, I, I had some questions. I, I know that the reason why I went there was because I was born into it and there was just always kind of something that just didn't feel right, I guess. And yeah. I know that we can't really determine truth by our feelings, but it didn't feel... It didn't feel right. It didn't feel right. Um, you know, we don't usually kind of cover it this way, but if, if a Mormon was watching right now, would they 
give you credit for anything or would they say it just dismiss what you would have or considered as a testimony? What do you think? Um, I don't think that it would be fair to dismiss it. I mean, born into it, multi-generational, definitely believed it, baptized, yeah. you know, attended pretty frequently. Up until my parents' divorce, I mean, I had questions and I would miss some Sundays, but up until they divorced, I didn't really fully bail on going to church until that happened. Yeah. Did you figure when you got older that you'd kind of come back to the fold, yeah. so to mm -hmm. speak? Yeah, that's kind of what my older brother Ryan did. Yeah. Um, he kind of partied for a little <laughs> while and then came back and went on a mission. And, and went on a mission. And, yeah. And it's still active, I guess? Yes, or? very active. Okay. So, seminary, you say you took a little seminary? What, yes. Where'd, where'd you go to school then? Uh, high school? At Hillcrest Junior High and at Murray High School. I did take oh. it one year in high school too. Oh, okay. I think 10th grade. Yeah. So, what happens to you after that? Um, I just get kind of lost, I guess. I got my girlfriend pregnant in high school, and oh, so we had a child as a senior in high school. And oh, boy. So, that was a tough challenge. Yeah. And so, that kind of changed the direction of my life. Yeah, what did her parents, were they members of the church and was she a member? <clears throat> um, they were not members of the church, but I definitely remember stressing out about telling my dad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, how did that go? <laughs> uh, better than I anticipated. He actually told me that when I told him I needed to talk to him privately, he said that he knew that's what I was going to tell him. Uh -huh. So somehow he had been expecting that. <laughs> and mom? Uh, she just kind of freaked out, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. you can't do this, you're too young, and I was definitely too young, but, yeah. yeah, we, we did it, and she's a great kid today. Oh, that's good. So, after that, I mean, did you marry then the young lady? No, oh. um, we didn't, uh, we dated till our daughter was about one, mm. and then, uh, we broke up, and then I would have my daughter every weekend for at least oh. one night. Okay. So, so where were you at religious-wise here with this? Did you feel a compulsion to come back? I was starting to question whether God existed or didn't. Really? Mm hmm That's kind of a... What do you think the reasoning for that is? Why, why would you start questioning, do you think? Well, because I felt like I was pretty sure that there were some things about the church that didn't seem truthful. Um, but I'm not really sure you why. You felt guilty over, I mean, you feel like you were a lost cause in, Kinda, in the yeah. sense that I've sinned and okay, God doesn't love me and kind Yeah, of thing, well, I, I, I got to the point, well, and when you're in school and I, I started attending the community college after and took uh, anthropology and that they kind of teach more of the evolution <laughs> yeah. thing and, yeah. you know, you're yeah. kind of the out outcast if you believe in God there. Yeah. So I started to kind of take on more of the Darwin evolutionary sure. type of don't really know. Yeah. And you know it's it's interesting and I I just feel like our foundation is so much in the church mm -hmm. uh, not really a foundation in God and Jesus as much. It's more is Joseph Smith a prophet? Is the Book of Mormon true? Yeah. Uh, is the prophet you know, the current prophet, is. does he speak for God now? Mm -hmm. And where where were you at with those portions of your testimony, so to speak? I felt like there were some questions. I didn't research him at that point. Eventually I did. Yeah. But at that point, there were some definite questions about just the validity of the story with the golden plates. That's kind of the one that always... Because I always looked at that picture at church with him sitting at the desk and the plates right there, and it seemed so fabricated, I guess. Did it really? Yeah. Struck you that way? It did. And here I believed it. Gee whiz. <laughs> well, as a youngster, I did, but growing, you know, when you get to be a teenager in high school Start and you see that picture and you're like, huh? I don't know if it was exactly like that. Yeah. You probably didn't know about the head in the head in the hat and the stone at that point. I didn't, but yeah. when I started, when I wanted to go back to the church um, years later, that was one of the things that really threw me for a loop. The, oh. the seer stone in the hat is the technique for um, 
translating. The inter <laughs> yeah, translating. Yeah. So between that and so, what did you do after uh, high school? You went to finish school, college, or uh, you went I to community started going college? to the community college, and um, I just got kind of lost. I was, you know, hmm. pretty much a non-believer in God, and uh, wasn't active in the LDS church. I was kind of had rebelled against my parents, and yeah. I started going down a really dark path. Uh, sold drugs for some years and Ooh, started doing drugs and mm -hmm. basically kind of a dead end there, was huh? <laughs> either using or temporarily clean till you know just about four years ago so wow. well tell us what happens and now your folks were I guess they just considered you a lost cause did they love you did they support you They're, they've always been very supportive me and my dad had some rocky situations where we didn't sure. talk for a little while but yeah. they were always kind of let me do my own thing yeah. and so they've they've always been pretty supportive they never like fully shunned me or anything yeah. like that family functions you were able to go to those and yeah that. i just think maybe i probably became kind of a subject that people didn't really bring up to them that much like what's he up to uh, well nothing what's Kyle doing now huh? yeah yeah well so tell us I guess the the good news here and what to what happened well I wanted um, like I said I had a lot of problems with drugs yeah and one night I took too many drugs and really got a in a scary situation where I thought I was having a heart attack mm. And I just fell on my knees, and I didn't really know which God I was praying to, but I just said over and over for a couple of hours, just, please, God, help me. Please, God, help me. Mm -hmm. And the next day, I got through the night, and the next day, I said, okay, you got me through this, God. Let's let's do some research, and let's find out who who you are. Really? Yeah. Good so I point. wanted to go back to the church with my dad and my brothers. Yeah. Did you start going back then? I, I didn't yet. I was planning on it, but I felt that I needed to verify whether it was true or not. I wanted whether to what know was what whether was the, the LDS doctrine and, and, and the way that Joseph... Um, said it happened I wanted to know if it really happened that way were the witnesses really there are the golden plates wow. real yeah those are the type of questions I wanted to know before I just started attending I needed some physical evidence to corroborate the faith okay and and did you have questions about those things along the way or did this just you felt like yeah okay, I did I, mean, I did and then I um, I started uh, reading. Um, I, I read part of the Book of Mormon. Mm. I tried to. I didn't get very far. My dad is that the first time you'd read it, really? That's the first time I seriously read yeah. it. Um, as a child, I you know skipped around in different chapters and verses, sure. but this is the first time I cracked it open and tried to just read it. Yeah, and it just seemed kind of like a lot of. Uh, it came to passes and yeah, run-on <laughs> sentences, and it just didn't flow very well. I couldn't get past the first couple of oh, really? chapters. Interesting. So, so what else happened? You started researching I, a little bit. To... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I started researching a lot, oh. and uh, I saw some of the stories about you know real faithful members like yourself and. Uh, I think Lee Baker at the time was uh, just... He was also a former bishop. Yeah, yeah Baker, and I yeah. just thought, wow, if these guys are leaving not because of their own <laughs> sins or uh, yeah. bad treatment from others, but because of doctrine, then, yeah, this is a, a big deal. Something you should find out, I guess. Yeah. So. Okay, so. so what else did you run into? Well, after that, I started... Uh, I didn't... I knew that God had helped me, and I felt like He He wanted me to start following Him. I just felt different, um, so I started. I tried to decide what church am I going to go to, yeah. and so I attended a Catholic church, mm. and that was definitely different for me. <laughs> um, I had been there on a school project in college. I took a religions class, mm. 
And so I thought, okay, well, maybe God's at the Catholic Church. So yeah. went down there and uh, actually tried to join the Catholic Church, but the guy never emailed me back. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And uh, so then I started reading the Bible. I don't really know why, but I was compelled to go to Walmart and try to find a Bible. I didn't really know and where to found, buy a Bible. found one at Walmart. Yeah. Huh? And... Well, uh, so I started reading the Bible and uh, started some things really started speaking to me um, pretty quickly. Now, going back to your uh, moment when you prayed to God, um, gee, for two hours, that's, that's, that, did you understand that as a born-again moment for you? Did you put it looking in those back, terms? Yeah, looking back, I do. It yeah. was it was a sanctification process for sure. Yeah. You know, letting go of some of the habits and the drugs and, and everything. And you were able to do that? Yeah, for and, sure. Oh, it good. took some time, but yeah. yeah. You've become you feel like you became a new creature as the oh, Bible says. Oh, absolutely. I mean, all of a sudden overnight I cared about topics like abortion and uh, <laughs> things that I never really cared, cared about. about before. Yeah. Yeah, did you were you, were you drawn at all to the Bible at this point? Did you feel like that was maybe a place for an answer? Or? Yeah, well, I I don't really know why. I started reading in Matthew, and that's still my favorite gospel. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> I found out that this was kind of all simultaneous over a period of a couple of months. Yeah. But um, I found out that my name in Greek means a narrow passage. And so I read the verse in Matthew where he talks about wide is the gate that leads to destruction and yeah. narrow is the way and few there are that find it. And I just thought, a narrow passage? Okay, I'm paying attention. <laughs> I'm learning here. Yeah, yeah, so I felt like there were some things that, that God really wanted me to, to put together. Wow. Did you share any of this with family or siblings or anything at this point? Yeah, I I kind of did. I yeah. I didn't really realize that I thought that while I was uh an LDS member that I was I believed in the same Jesus that the Bible taught. Oh yeah. And I realized that there's actually quite different. <laughs> yeah. Cuz cuz at church I didn't really learn a lot about the teachings of the New Testament and Jesus, what no. he actually taught. Yeah. Um but we did use his name to close the prayer a lot. <laughs> yeah, every prayer yeah. ends in Jesus' name. But yeah. you didn't know, I mean, did you know then that he was, that Mormons, consider, or LDS considered him uh, uh, our brother, our elder brother? Did you know I that? I found that out right around the same time when I was doing all of the research and yeah. finding where to go. So I was kind of still researching the LDS stuff because I thought that my family would be open to that they didn't know this information yeah about were they open to it no no <laughs> <laughs> were you more accepted as a as a black sheep of the family as a mormon but black sheep of the family or now that you've become a christian so to speak that are they more accepted less accepted uh, different it's a very good question because I've had times where I thought that I was more accepted when I was struggling with the Even drugs. Though you were and, sinful and not doing, right. keeping the commandments. But yes. now that you're a, a, a born again Christian, as we would say, yeah, you're probably less accepted. Well, in some ways, to a point. Yeah. yeah, they still love me. I have a great family. I love yeah. them very much. Yeah. They've treated me very well. But they definitely don't want to talk about the information that that I've found. Yeah, either about the church or about Jesus and the Bible or both. both. Yeah, they don't really yeah. want to. Have don't. you tried to share some of the negative stuff that you've learned? I, yeah, negative, I mean like Book of Mormon and archaeology and yeah, and all that I stuff. have, and that was one of the big things for me is that I was stunned when I found out that as far as uh, Book of Mormon archaeology that <laughs> Zarahemla or any of these cities had never actually been found, not one. Yeah, I know. 
And I, I just thought, not one? Yeah. And then you look at the b biblical archaeology, and, and we can go there today. We can catch a flight and stand on all these places, and, and Jesus was really there. Yeah. So there's actually a, a evidence, a substance to put with your faith. Isn't that, that's good news, isn't it? Oh, yeah. it's amazing news. So what uh, now? You, at this point, you also uh, run into a young lady. Yes. And this is like four years ago or so you're saying? Yes. Yeah, yeah. and and I, I was uh, dental assisting for my dad kind of uh, for the eight for eight years prior to oh, uh, there. leaving there and going to the post office four oh. years ago. Okay. And so I started at the post office and we met in the training class and I don't know how, but praise <laughs> God, I got a wife now. And is she Christian or is she LDS? She is Christian, yep. We oh. go attend church together and our kids come with us and mm -hmm. we love it. We love going. That's awesome. Well, what uh, kind of a message do you have to Latter-day Saints? Well, your family and friends, what, what would you tell them? Oh, I would just tell my family that uh, I love them very much. Yeah. And it's really weighing on my heart that they don't really want to talk about it so for the most part I just try to just show that I'm been changed just by living my Christian life and well they must see the difference in your be, being a new creature and, and so yeah and so. my dad definitely said that he's noticed a big change in me yeah. and he and I have been able to have some real conversation about well, good. these issues and still yeah. disagree yeah. fiercely. Agree to disagree. Yeah, yeah, but at the end we can hug each other and our relationship yeah. stays solid. Yeah. But my brother, he's not really open to talking about it. And so the message... Isn't that I, interesting how that is? I mean, they just don't, they're just resistant and, and they just don't, you don't have anything to tell them. Yeah. I mean, they don't think you have anything to tell them. I mean, he's got an MBA from Westminster, yeah. brilliant finan financial Smart advisor, guy. and he's so logical in all these other areas. So I was really kind of surprised when he didn't, because I, I like to deal with logic and just yeah. straight facts too. Right. And so I was definitely surprised <laughs> when he reacted so negatively, but... Well, what uh, this is your opportunity, I guess, to share what... Uh... Yeah, I would just tell them, um, kind of, I've, I've said some of the things to him already, but yeah. to uh, any Mormon, whether they're a member of my family or not, I would just encourage them to look outside at all of the, the resources. I mean, this is 2017. We have information now that we haven't always had. Now, I know you can't just believe everything that you read on the internet, right. and you definitely need to check your sources, but you can go downtown today and see the quote in the history of the church where Joseph Smith talks about how he did more <laughs> than Jesus to keep a church together. Yeah. That one, that one got my wife a big yeah. time. <laughs> so I would tell the current Mormon that there is a quote that is authentic, from their own literature where Joseph Smith basically boasts about doing more than the apostles and more than Jesus because that was really the nail in the coffin for me but my main message is that that Jesus is real yeah and that's what's encouraging because a lot of people find this stuff out and they become atheists I know that's one of the things that bothers me I mean I'd, I I'm sensing, and I don't, you can answer this, but you didn't have a real strong foundation in Jesus, mm -mm. even through your, your your youth. There, I mean, it wasn't. We no. just don't talk about Jesus, certainly not as God. Oh no. Even though John tells us in John in the Bible that mm -hmm. John, he is God, and Mormons believe that he's God, but it's just kind of a, I don't know. He's just a, he's just our helper. He's not really the awesome God that we, we worship now. To a Mormon, Jesus is a footnote. To me, he's everything. Yeah, isn't that different? The cross, of course, means a little different to you now. Oh, yeah. I guess you never wore one as a 
as a youth, unless you were rebelling, oh, I no, guess. No, <laughs> the people didn't wear those at church. In no. fact, I knew a girl that got kicked out of a church for wearing a cross for necklace. Wearing... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that just isn't. And the Bible, is that uh, totally different for you now, I'm sure? Huh? Yeah, the biggest difference, Earl, is I love reading the Bible. I love praying. I love going to church. I'm definitely not perfect and my life isn't just this yeah, yeah. perfect smooth road now but it's given my life a purpose that yeah. I have never had and I know that that purpose is to glorify him and not for our own that's, reward that's such a great message and it's the good news what Jesus did for us that, yeah that we couldn't do our, for ourselves I mean we're all sinners yes yeah and Mormons I think are kind of like, well, I know I'm not perfect, but I'm not doing any big sins, you know. Yeah. But they don't understand that sin is sin and that yeah. it's his righteousness right. that saves us, not not what we can do. Yes. And, uh, and that's his righteousness that I'm carrying today. Yeah. It's not me. It's him. I, I could never have told you in a million years that I would go from, you know, ex-drug dealer to hardcore Christian. <laughs> what a surprise. Huh? Yeah. Unless it was God's hand doing that. So. It absolutely was. There's not a doubt in my mind. Yeah. Well, what, um, you, you know, I, I just sense the more I learn, and probably you too, either the good news or the bad news, nothing seems to ever support more Joseph Smith. You know, the polygamy that I've learned about and polyandry and the book of Abraham and all those negative things and then the more you study the Bible you realize that God did establish his gospel and that the gates of hell would not prevail against it mm -hmm. and that Joseph Smith wasn't needed to restore the church. Had you understood any of that? Before? Yeah they always told us that the church was I mean Joseph called all of the denominations an abomination. Yeah, absolutely. So they kind of back off of that now. Well, they want to seem more Christian, you yeah. know, I think, a little bit. But, yeah, and yeah. that's kind of what I told my brother. He got upset with me for saying, you know, my opinion about, you know, the LDS church not being true, but that's exactly what they taught me when I was little, that, that we had the truth and no one else did. Yeah, and discount the Bible. You yeah. Know, the eighth article of faith. That it's yeah. Only translated correctly. Well, Kyle, our time's about up. All right. Any last minute thoughts you want to share? Or? Um, no, just that I love my family very much and I'll well, continue to pray for them. And We do love Mormons, don't we? I mean, absolutely. We just wish they would do a little critical thinking. Yeah. And just kind of step back and look at, look at the facts. And, yeah. You know. And let the evidence just start with an open heart and let the evidence take you where it takes you. And don't presuppose from the beginning yeah. uh, that, it, that these things aren't true. Does your family, and we're just about out of time, but does your family know about the gospel essays? Have any of them read those? Have you ever challenged them to read? I would those? love to get to that point to find out, but I don't know at I'll this ask point. Them if they've, ask them if they've ever heard of them, and if they haven't, uh, to tell them at the LDS.org and... Yeah, look at them. I have read them. <laughs> Kyle, thanks so much. Thank it's you, Earl. To, you're a good brother, and I appreciate you sharing your story. And see you next time.